Hey guys, it's Jane. It's not quite Friday. I'm filming this one early because family stuff that's going on starting tomorrow. I spent most of the week reading Emma Newman's Split Worlds series. Uh, last week, if you watched it, you remember that I read the first one, Between Two Thorns. I enjoyed that so much. I went back to the library and they had books two, three and four, which I have now read. So they are Any Other Name, All Is Fair and number four is A Little Knowledge. I've really been enjoying the series. It's quite a complicated world that she's built. So it's a sort of three phase world. There is um, the mundane normal world. There is Exilium, which is where the fairies live. The evil fairies. They're always evil fairies, aren't they? Oh, only interesting fairy is an evil fairy, I say. And then there's the nether, which is an in-between place. There are humans who live in the nether who never age and their society is very um, constrained. They are um, the great families who serve the fairy lords and also some human servants who serve the great families. Some other characters that we meet in the stories are sorcerers. It turns out that the sorcerers have actually are the ones who historically split the worlds, who sent the fairies into exilium, into prison and split um, the normal world from the fairy world. Um, at some point in the past they were as one. So there's the sorcerers. The sorcerers have police officers who um, patrol, make sure that the fairies are keeping the terms of the agreement, of the accord. And these police officers who are humans um, but who have been magicked in a fairly specific way are called arbiters. There is one arbiter who we spent a lot of time in with in the books. His name's Max um, and uh, going further into the series we learn quite a lot about his history and how he came to be an arbiter but anyway so the arbiters, these police officers. Um, we also another main character who we follow is Sam. Now Sam initially at the very beginning is just a uh, a normal human going about his daily business when he happens to run into a bit of naughty business that one of the fae families is up to. Somebody's being kidnapped and he happens to overhear something that he shouldn't and then his memory is wiped and stuff. So um, Sam continues to be an important character and his role in the story grows as we go along because he is taken under the wing of um, a guy from a, a yet another part of the story, uh, Lord Iron, who is part of the Elemental Court. Now I can't tell you really much more. We follow Kathy, who is a member of these great families, a socialite in this world where youth and beauty is everything and we're obeying what you've been told by your social superior and right back to your fairy lord is everything. And she is a mouthy, rebellious chick uh, and yeah. So she's not loving it. Um, so there's Kathy, there is um, Will, who she's married off to, very much against her Will, <laughs> um, who is this really interesting character. Um, Will is one of the most interesting characters in the story because as I was reading, I kept going back and forth about how I felt about Will because he does genuinely care for Kathy, but that of course does not mean that what he does is necessarily in her best interests. He thinks it is, <laughs> but that's the different thing. Um, so yeah, so there's all these families, all this drama, all these um, hijinks and adventure. The first three books kind of describe a pretty normal sort of adventure story kind of arc. Book four, she's just like stepped on the gas. So um, Will and Catherine have achieved something major at the end of book three and book four opens with, well now what happens? Now, um, now they have some power 
what is going to happen as a result of that. And book four, uh, a little knowledge, one of the most interesting uh, analysis of politics and activism and that sort of stuff that I've read in a long time. I really, really enjoyed this book. I'd been enjoying the previous books. Book four blew my mind. It really um, took the whole thing to another, le another level. Now, book five is the final book of the series. Book five that I haven't read. I uh, didn't rush on to read book five because I wanted book four to marinate for a little while before I allow myself to kind of find the conclusion. I'm, I'm still hopeful that things are going to turn out well, although it's... <laughs> <laughs> it seems much less feasible at the end of book four than, you know, at the end of book three. But yeah, this is a really interesting series. Emma Newman has a really light touch, but there is so much meat going on in the story. I really encourage people who um, are interested to pick that one up. Uh, since I finished um, uh, A Little Knowledge, I have been reading something completely different. Uh, for my In Real Life book club next week, I am reading A Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. I'm about halfway through. Um, I'm pretty sure I've read this before, or at least seen a movie of it. But it is it is quite a long time ago. So I'm, as I said, I'm about halfway through, and I think I know what's going on. I, like I think I know who done it. But I'm not sure whether that's because I remember it. Like I can't, don't actually remember, but I remember like it's familiar. So um, yeah, I I come and go with Agatha. I'm actually enjoying this more than I thought that I would. Um, I think if your expectations are reasonable, you can enjoy what's there. Um, I would not have chosen it, but as I said, it's a book club pick. So um, yeah, that's that's coming up. We'll find out how Hercule uses his little grey cells to figure out everything uh, fairly shortly, I'm sure. And after that, I'm not 100% certain what I'm going to read next. I've got a few things um, that have come in uh, holds from my library. So we'll just have to see what I'm in the mood for. Oh, there was one other thing that I wanted to tell you about. Um, I have ordered a book. Wow, how exciting um, and unexpected. It is a book called The Bakery Men Don't See. It's a cookbook. It's the only uh, cookbook ever nominated for the Hugo Award. Uh, it's a re-issue um, of a book that's been out for, oh, I don't know, 30 years or something. And it's um, printed as a fundraiser for the James Tiptree Award. Uh, so I saw that the, the reissue had come out and I thought I would um, buy myself a copy, not that expensive. Um, and I just thought I'd tell you about it in case anybody else is interested in having a look at um, this cookbook and um, supporting the James Tiptree Award. I'd love to hear what you guys are reading. I hope you're all well. And I'll talk to you later. Bye!